Welcome back to the Adventures Log. My name is Coach Flipperman, and today we'll be reviewing not one, not two, but three lists dedicated for gold farming. With the recent change to the Minor Warrior gem uh, that affected the Long Zucker archetype that we reviewed last week, a lot of players have been sending me questions about um, what do we do now? Uh, what do we do with this deck? Is, is my, are my Zucker even good uh, right now? So. This is what we're going to explore today. Uh, the change to the minor gems makes it so that the minor gem doesn't give training anymore uh, in all zones. It, it gives a stats bonus based on the number of trained troops that you have in play. This is a very big difference because of the uh, reinforcement talent that's now not synergizing with the gem, therefore making us not able to ensure that we draw Zokoi on turn 2 every single day, saying every single game. Now, we're going to find a lot of other creative ways to do it uh, it's not going to be as fast it's not going to be as consistent but it will work and it's going to be very good at gold farming so this is what we're going to be reviewing today um, we're going to start by going with our elf word so let's just take a quick look and see what's going with our elf word uh, for the farming build You'll see that the, the list has changed. Uh, the list before uh, was mainly just, you know, Ruby and, and one Zokar, right? But um, now that we cannot use a talent to get Zokar back from the deck, um, guaranteed, what we're going to do is use the same kind of technique, but with something else. So we're going to use the Ice Shard with the Fate Weave mechanic. Fate Weave is that when you Fate Weave, you choose to uh, put uh, one card on top of your deck and you choose which type. Is it a resource or a non-resource? Now you'll see that in our deck we have all resources but one Zokoi. Uh, we're running acorns but acorns have the keyword spectral which makes them uh, invisible to all other mechanics in the game. So um, they're not going to be affected uh, by fate weaves. So what would happen is that when we fate weave um, if we only have one card in our deck that is not a resource, then we draw it. So that, that, that is going to be the way we're going to ensure that we get Zilkoi back. Um, the other thing is that we're not uh, using the minor uh, warrior gem anymore because it was changed. So instead we're going to use the uh, minor ruby of the arena. So we're going to use gladiator 1, it's going to add one attack. Um, it's not trained, but it's still one attack. We're going to have a, a base Zokoi of when it's our turn, it's going to be five attack, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, but we're missing speed and we're missing a lot of traits right now on our Zokoi to make this work. The next step is to run uh, Spirit of the Triumvirate. Uh, we were running it before. Uh, this time we, re we need to make sure that it's upgraded now. And what's going to do for us is that it's going to give flight and both flight and speed, which are two things that we're missing right now. So we're getting that. Um, we're going to use uh, Singler. Singler is going to provide plus one plus one to our Xokoi. So Xokoi will be five four. It has Gladiator, so it's going to be six four. And now, now we're talking, right? But we rather have five defense with Exocoi because of the scrap bombs that are played in Great Machine Graveyard. Uh, I mentioned that this is a video dedicated to gold farming right now. Uh, and the way you do it is that you find the Great Machine Graveyard dungeon. Now that dungeon, uh, there's a card that is named Scrap Bomb. It's a one cost quick action for one ruby threshold. Uh, you have to sacrifice an artifact and if you do, you can do four damage to target champion or troop. So if your Xokari only has 4 defense, it will sometimes get killed by the uh, opponent before it can attack. And that's a very bad thing. You have one card in your deck, if it gets killed, you don't win. You just die. So ideally, you get your Xokari up to 5 defense. This is why we're going to run uh, Zenith here. Uh, at the start of the game, random Sagata Troop in your deck, get plus 1 plus 1. We only have one card in the deck, it's a Sagata Troop, so we're good. Um, the reason we're going, and keep in mind that Singler targets a unique card and Zenith targets a uh, Sagitted card. So even if we create more cards in the deck, 
if we have more troops in the deck, you're always, always going to target Zogar. And now Spirit of the Triumvirate, however, targets a random troop. Three random troops. It can target the same troop uh, multiple times. Um, and this is where you get a bit wonky. That a situation that we didn't really add before, but now it's going to be a bit different. When we go into the tenant tree, you'll see that it's um, very different than before. Um, we're not going to go with trained here because uh, obviously it, it's not useful anymore for us. So we don't want that. What we're going to do, however, is going to run the um, GDT tenant. We're going to go parrying, get the war machine, and then get the clash gem. We're not going to go into war, you know, all war wand and uh, warrior's guilt. The reason being is that when you fate weave, you're going to draw a non-resource card. We start in the deck with only one that is non-resource, um, which, which is Zokor. If you, um, if you add when when you start the game and and your tenant create cards in your deck, when you fate weave. You're going to have more than one non-resource card. You're going to have your Xokoi, and you're going to have the cards that are created at the start of the game. So to get the Warrior Clash Gems, you don't have a choice. You either go through the one of these two that creates a bad card in your deck, or you go with the War Machine. So we're taking the Lesser of the Tree Evil, and we're going to go there. If you go with these two, what would happen is that um, you will... <laughs> In essence, 50% of the time you will draw one of these bad cards and it's not going to be good for you. They're not going to draw you one more card and they're going to impair your um, capacity to win the game. So you don't want that. Um, the other thing that we're doing that we were not doing on the last ten tree is that we're going to go and get Fortification. Fortification is at the beginning of the game, beginning of the game, you you create a castle wall and you put it into play. This ensures that we have a troop uh, if uh, the troop created by Zokoi dies, or it also ensures that we've got a lot of defense, right? That in Great Machine Graveyard, there's a few encounters that are very, very aggressive. You want that castle wall. It's very, very useful. It's going to save your life uh, multiple times. Uh, this one is irrelevant. Uh, this is irrelevant. We're still going to go with Fury. We're still going to go with Berserk King. So, these are the tenants that we're going for and i'm just going to do one or two mash just to show you how this works and then we're going to switch to the next one the next uh deck idea so here it is going to great machine graveyard and we're going to have hopefully we're going to have a good example for the first game if not we're going to do more but the deck is still very very consistent there's instead of having only one scenario right now you're going to have like three maybe four if you want to stretch it to keep in mind uh, when you play the list so it's not that bad we can do this it's still very very fast even though sometimes you won't be uh, winning on the Sometimes you won't be winning on turn 2 or even on turn 3, you're going to win on turn 4. Uh, the thing that you keep in mind is that, yes, usually a deck that wins on turn 2 is better than a deck that wins on turn 3, but in reality, it depends on the number of interaction that you have with your deck to do this. Um, there's a lot of decks that win on turn 4 that are faster than decks that win on turn 2, because they're, they don't rely on a crazy combo that involves trying all your deck. Uh, that's the same thing here. So the deck is a bit slower. It is still pretty darn quick though. If you want to uh, just make sure that you have all, you know, the phases uh, deselected to keep the bare minimum and you play really fast and you don't record a video when you comment, uh, you're going to have a lot of things. Uh, you're going to have a lot of speed. So here we don't have a ruby ice. So this is uh, a turn three kill it's not it's not going to be a turn to kill we're going to run an ice that's going to give us fate weave we're going to choose adventure now we're going to have either of two scenarios happen here we're going to either draw Xokoi or we're going to draw something else the only other card in our, in our deck right now is the war machine so 
Um, there's 50% chance that we're going to get a war machine or Exocoid. We got Exocoid this time around. Um, in this position, one thing uh, to remember, I added the uh, permafrost in the deck. The reason they are there is that a very low percentage of game, you're going to play a Ruby Ice on turn one, and then you're going to draw your Xocoy. And usually you need two Ruby thresholds. So if you don't have another Ruby, uh, a Ruby in your hand, and you have all, you know, uh, or all uh, ice, or you have uh, you you add two mulligan for a very very small hand, and you don't have your second ruby threshold. Using permafrost when you have uh, on on your second turn is going to you know make sure that you can just go ahead and, and use this. Uh, it still works though, uh, since we're playing the warrior and we have the warrior gem and it doesn't have a, a threshold requirement. Uh, I I'm pretty sure uh, I didn't calculate the math. Someone in the comment will provide you with the information but um, in the upcoming builds the next two builds this this is not a line you want to take but I think this one is fine here since we're going to uh, since we're playing a uh, a war a uh, since we're playing with the warrior major gem so troop as flight it has all the nice boost we're missing one because uh, Gladiator Gem, the Minor Gem Gladiator, uh, Gladiator 1 requires Ruby Threshold, we don't have any right now. Uh, since we played enough uh, uh, something else, then a Ruby Shard, and then uh, we played the Permafrost. But since we have the uh, Warrior Clash Gem, Major Gem, it's more than enough for the kill still. So in this situation, it doesn't matter. So the point was just that be careful with permafrost just you know if you're fighting the last bot last boss it has 32 health maybe you're cutting close if you don't have a ruby threshold for the additional uh two three four damage uh for the most part you should be fine though uh if you're still playing the elf warrior this should work right you saw that um we were able to do something nice. Now, us trying the War Machine is fairly great. We even have a Ruby Eye, so this is good, good, good. And um, you'll notice here that the Castle Walls has, has 5 defense. And 5 defense, really key. Really key in our, um, in our defense because it can block one of these and not die. So we can block another one, another turn. Because we do need to survive at least 2 turns, sometimes 3. So this fight is, is very tricky. Uh, we're going to go with the Ruby Eyes. Get Exocoy on the board. I'm going to use the War Machine now to draw the Exocoy to just have the troop here. And then we're going to attack so that I have one additional blocker next turn. We can activate Zokoi, uh, you know, with the Castle Wall. So even if this one dies, it's not the end of the world. And we just want to make sure that uh, you know, right now it doesn't have any you know, cards left, any resources left to play cards, but sometimes it happens and uh, you just want to be pre prepared for that. And here we're going to go for the kill. I wanted to give you guys a game where we um, draw the war machine first. We'll see if the next one if the net next one ends up that way, if not, we're going to just switch to the other deck. Um, should be. It's not a big deal, but when you do get the War Machine first, you're going to be. Uh, you need a second Fate Weave trigger, and this is where it gets tricky, because the ideal hand uh, with this configuration is going to be two Ruby shards and two Ice, or one Ruby Ice and one Ruby Shard. Um, and well right now we've got an acorn so this should be good um we'll see but a, a hand with only one uh, fate weave shard uh, one ice shard it, this is where it's tricky because if your uh first uh fate weave doesn't get you um doesn't get you the zokor you need another one uh, so we're going to draw. This is where I like to keep my acorns. You don't use the acorn right now. Because we're either drawing Zokoi and, and we're fine. And if we're drawing War Machine, uh, 
that's not great so i'd rather draw war machine here if it would have been war machine at least we've got another draw to get another ice or something else it doesn't i guess technically it doesn't matter i'm, I'm just rambling because you're drawing two cards anyway but uh, yeah so in the year i should i likely yeah i think the mats check out we would have been able to kill our opponent there but uh, we're just going to be, wait one more turn and yeah we're 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 slow right so we're not killing on turn two we're killing on turn three but uh it involves no clicks at all it involves past all priority and that's it uh if mine would like to register at some point but uh it's not a big deal right we're still pretty fast we're giving the opponent an opportunity to play more cards so it's a it's a tad slower but it's not you know it's not miles slower and that's the important part. You'll also notice that we're not running the uh, Adrian mercenary anymore. Uh, we don't need to because the uh, Elf Warrior provides us with four resources on turn four, on turn two. And uh, if the stars align, we play it on turn two and we win. If not, we did it. We win on turn three. That's not a problem. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the new Zuckor for you. So uh, if you want, just want to keep your Elf Warrior. This is what you build. It's going to be slightly less cons consistent, which means not 100%. And uh, some, a slow amount of the time, you're going to have like weird milligan decisions to take, or maybe not weird, but harder. Uh, you're going to lose a fight once in a while because of the scrap bombs, depending on, on your last mercenary. Uh, if you're using um, Zenith, you should be okay. Uh, but yeah, there, there's flexibility in the third mercenary slot, but you saw the deck, this is how you do it. And um, and as always, when you're farming Great Machine Graveyard, there's two scenarios. The first one is that you don't have any Kickstarter bonuses. So um, when you don't have the Kickstarter bonuses, what you want to do is uh, take the main row, the, the quick row here in the middle, and then you do the three optional nodes. It's going to make it so that your um, robot is stronger and it's going to give you more gold per hour. The reason why you will see a, a, some player go straight to the end without doing the three optional node often will be that these players have Kickstarter backer uh, reward on their account. That means they have uh, twice the reward at the end of the dungeon for defeating the boss. Uh, so twice the experience, twice the goal, twice the packs. So when you get twice the packs and twice the gold, uh, going straight to the last boss and then re restarting is practically the same amount of gold uh, per hour. It's just that you get more chances at packs and you get more experience. So depending on what you're doing, uh, if your character is not max level or things of the sort, you may want to... Um, go with the optional nodes or not i know that 99 percent of the player won't have the kickstarter back a reward so uh if you're not sure just do these three nodes and then complete the dungeon it's going to make for a slightly longer playthrough but you're going to make more gold per hour in the end um now we're going to up in and we're going to change gears into the next deck so this was suggested by um i <laughs> I had the name ready before the recording and I had to reboot and now I don't have it so give me a second. I just want to make sure that I give credit to the right person. And yeah, that's a bit weird during recording but uh, bear with me here. I want to make sure that I give credit to the right person and I want to make sure that I pronounce the name right hopefully. That's going to be the case. Okay. That would be... <laughs> Run Guard. So V-R-O-E-N-G-A-R-D. Okay. Run, Run Guard. Uh, 
that was posted in reply to my uh, last week's video uh, after the nerf, he posted a, a deck uh, with the lone Zokoi as a centerpiece. So same same principle, right? We're playing only one Zokoi, but he's, instead of using an elf horn, he's using a human horn. And there's uh, uh, there's an upside to it. The big change is that a uh, human warrior, when you use your battle power uh, from the warrior class, instead of gaining two temporary resources in the case of the elf warrior, you're going to give plus one plus one to all your troops on the board. So you're going to uh, you're going to end up being uh, boosting all your troops. Uh, will improve the size of Xokoi and the. The big switch here is that we're, we are not going to go for the warrior gem in this build. Uh, we're just going to use the standard gems here. So let me just put the mercenaries back that we need. Uh, this one was uh, Kefra. And uh, here it is. And we've got Enirian, we've got Kefra, we've got this guy here. And the last one is Ether Singler, or um, you can use Zenith. It's the it's the exact same thing. Um, doesn't really change much much. So we're still going to go Singler because Singler is a an account level reward, and everyone every player that has a uh, I think past account level fifteen or twenty, uh, you will have that mercenary. It might be even lower than that. So. Here what we're doing is that we're using Adrian, so our Zoko is going to have mobilized. We're using Kefra, so that our Zoko is going to be 4 cost. So with these two, we're going to be able to play Zoko on turn 2, at minimum, if we if we have the right start. Uh, same thing, we're going to use Spirit of the Triumvirate to make sure that we can, uh, we can have flight and speed on our Zoko. The last mercenary slot is just going to be plus one plus one um, to Xokoi itself. So our Xokoi is going to have the double damage gem, the major ruby gem here, twin strike, and we're going to go with Gladiator one again. Um, one of the key things here is that our Xokoi is going to be a three plus one, so that's four. It's not going to be five health. So. Uh, it's going to be uh, vulnerable to the scrap bomb. So if you keep if you keep getting into the scrap bomb, what you do is that you change Kefra for Zanut uh, uh, in, in this case, since we already have Singler, and then your uh, Zokoi is going to be five defense. Uh, it will affect your speed. You're not going to be able to have kills on turn two anymore. But if you know, you're just skipping your turn and then skipping the other turn. It doesn't change that much. If you're hardcore, you know, uh, farming gold, yes, you may not like that. But for the most part, it's not going to change a, a whole lot. And if you really don't have, like, Scrap Bomb and it, it's ruining your day for some reason, then just just switch Kefra uh, here for uh, anything that gives plus one defense. You have a core from the top of my head. You have a core. You have... Um, uh, Zenith and then you'll be fine but it, it really the same here applies this is the same distribution and you've got a user card uh, one of the key things though here is that uh, you'll notice that we're not going for the wire class gem so this is the big difference we're still going to go with the buckets we're still going to get fortification for defense and then we're going to go with these uh, with these last few talents uh, we we uh, one question that I saw in the last video was that um, why don't why why can you have uh, these four slots for mercenaries instead of three? This is a uh, human racial trait that uh, is leadership. You may include one ad an additional mercenary in your party at level fifteen. So this is where it comes in. You can start a uh, human, but as long as it's not max level, you don't get your additional mercenary slot. And this build here kind of requires four. So this is why we're playing the Human Warrior. But the other reason why we're playing the Human Warrior is that Human Warrior innately will provide us with... Um, because of the Inspiring Strike, it provides one more attack. So if we calculate our attack, we're going to have four. 
And then we're going to have five because of Gladiator one. We're going to have six because of uh, Singler. And our Zuko deals double damage. It doesn't have the major uh, warrior gem. So it's not going to add up his attack every time he attacks. So it's always going to be the same thing. So assuming that we're always attacking at six, it's going to be on the turn in attacks, it's going to be 12 and then 12 again. So that's 24. Uh, add in your warrior attack, it's going to be 24 plus four. You're at 28. Uh, we're running the um, Berserk King Tenant. We're doing two attacks, so we're at 30. That's still not enough to kill Scott in one in one turn. Where you get the kills that you're using, um, you're using your warrior tenant, uh, your warrior attack, and your human. So you're giving plus one to all your troops, including Zokoi. It's going to be seven attack. So it's fourteen twice plus two plus four, and now you get a kill. Um, and and this is how the map works out, specifically. For Great Machine Graveyard. And this is going to be on turn 2, 3 or 4. Depending on the kind of hands that you get. Uh, the one thing that is nice though. Is that since we're not creating any card within our deck. With the Warrior Tenant. Since we're choosing another path. Um, this means that we only ever need one Fate Weave trigger. Ever. And that's okay. Um, the rest is just getting the Ruby Threshold that we need. To play the, the Xokoi. So this is where we're going. So I'm going to fire up one or two games with it and, and you see where we're going with that. But it's fairly similar. I think that this one in particular feels a lot closer to what we had before, the change. Just because it only ever requires one Fate Weave trigger and we're running 20 Fate Weave shards. So there's a very high chance, high chance that we get a Fate Weave chart, right? Um, and when we do, if it's not a Ruby a Fate Weave shard, then we're going to kill them on turn four, on turn three. Uh, but still pretty darn good. So if we see a Ruby Ice, we're, we're very happy. If we don't see one, then it's a turn three kill. So we start with the Ruby Ice. That's perfect. We know that we're going to get Zokoi. So this is going to be a turn two kill here and then pass the turn pass another turn yep and now we draw Zokoi creates a troop play the shard it's for cost because of Kefra it has mobilized the one thing though is that when you're playing the elf warrior you use your charge power before playing Zokoi because you're getting the resources that you need to play the Zokoi now we're playing a human warrior. You want to play your Xokoi before playing your champion power. Because using a champion power is going to boost all troops in the, on the board. And if Xokoi is not on board, it's not going to get any buffs. No. Here we play the Xokoi with the Mobilize. And then we use our champion power. This makes it 7, 5. And now we're going to attack for 14 plus 1, 15. And then we're going to attack for 15 again. And here we go, turn 2, kill, very straight, very clean. Uh, we have 4 Ruby Ice in the deck, so when you when you have a Ruby Ice in your hand, it's going to have a turn 2 kill. Um, when things are a bit harder is when you don't have the Ruby Ice, so this is what we're going to test uh, for this fight. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, we still reviewed a ton of fight, I got another video, so I don't want to linger too much on the demonstration for um this uh, second list which is fairly fairly similar to the other one so let's just uh, get hand that doesn't have a ruby ice okay so this is going to be way harder though so we're, we're on the artist fight um we do uh we are playing a human warrior and we're on the artist fight on the draw so we're looking at turn three so we need to survive two more attacks of these guys and I don't think it's possible uh, with this list, is it? So we need to 
Yeah, so in this situation, we're going to play our ice on the first turn. And then uh, we may want to kill one with our warrior power next turn. We're getting another five. Uh, yeah, okay, so we've got a blocker. And what happens right now is that if we play our ruby, Zokori is going to... I think we permafrost. And we target Zokori because we, 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 need, we need defense at this point. We need at least to disread this card, this troop from attacking. And then this is why we're playing the Zokoi right now. We could attack, but we don't have any Ruby. So it doesn't have uh, double damage. So I'm just going to hold off this turn. Uh, and we're going to, well, uh, sure, it doesn't have speed, right? Okay, so that's good. We're fine. If we wouldn't have, wouldn't have played the Zokoi, you would have attacked with this guy and we would have died. But we're good. We're good. The permafrost save us. So in this fight, if you're on the draw and uh, you don't have a ruby heist, the next best thing is to have a permafrost so that you play your Zokoi and then you fend off any additional attackers. And now we're going to be okay though. So we played our ruby shard. We've got double damage and then we can attack for the kill. Oh, I'm I'm very very pleased with this fight. So this shows you a bit of the you know why it's a bit more complicated to play the new version of the Lone Zakor strat. Uh, you need to think a bit more about it. Some of the hands you need to mull again. So we're a lot closer to a, a real good deck, right? The other deck was pretty broken in the sense that it was guaranteed and it was always the same thing. Now you have to think about it, and that. That's the that's the main thing, and that, that's really cool. They they found a very interesting way to fix the problem, while still giving us a very cool Xokoi deck with one card that is pretty good at farming gold, but it's not guaranteed. And as the content will get harder, uh, these all-in strategies are not going to cut it anymore. Uh, we just have to look at what happened with the frustrating arena update. Uh, a lot of the cheesy, very aggressive, very all-in decks they don't cut it anymore. So. I'm assuming that this shred like that is okay for Great Meshing Graveyard. Uh, but in the future, as we get more content, it might not be okay. But right now, it's still very, very good. You, you saw that I'm doing a minimal amount of clicks. And we're uh, going through fights very fast, even with commentaries and everything. So if you want to gold farm, uh, this is a good way to go. We're going to do one last one. And this is... Uh, not necessarily gold farming is likely more uh, for account level uh, power leveling. Uh, you're going to uh, run the same strategy. So there's one mercenary that enables us to do something very, very cool. Um, and it is uh, the mercenary Dadad. So uh, Dadad, where are you my friend? Here as a um, as a passive that at the start of the game you fate weave so we don't need ice shards we have only one zakoi so we guarantee that we'll always draw our, our zakoi by turn two every single game the one thing that we don't have though is that we're playing that at so sorry uh, so we do not have access to all of the nice very powerful warrior tanks. We're, we're playing a mercenary now. So on the first attack, it's your uh, Xokoi is going to do uh, 10 twice, so it's going to do 20. And then on the on the other on the next turn is going to do um, it's going to do 10 more. So it's 30 uh, on turn. It's 20 on turn three. And then ten on, uh, and then ten more on turn four. Now the reason why I'm mentioning is that is if you have a brand new character and you want to power level, you can just have a very simple deck that's going to be very very good, very linear, and it's going to win against 
95% of the encounters that you have in the game. There's some special encounters you will never be able to build with that strategy. It's too all in. It's a bit too slow for the encounters that have removal. But the great, great, great majority of the encounters, you will be able to beat with that. So if you create a brand new character, as soon as you're out of the first dungeon, you just put that in your deck. You put uh, Adrian and you put uh, Spirit of the Triumvirate. And here you go. You have one Dokoi, 59 shards, and you're good. You're good. You're going to win matches very quickly. You're going to be able to speed leveling. is going to require you a minimum amount of clicks. And when you get into the harder content and you can just you know switch gears play your main characters with all the talents with different decks but uh, for the most part you should be able to do quite a good percentage of the content in the game while leveling a new character with this strategy and it's going to be good we're go you're going i'm going to demonstrate one fight you're not going to use the fort mercenary because it comes with a max level uh human and if you're going to play the lone zakoi strategy you'd rather just play a uh, human warrior, right? Or an elf warrior. So you're not going to play that ad. But if you're loving a new character, then that ad might be very, very cool. So I just wanted to showcase this one just real quick before we end uh, this video, this episode uh, for the week. Here we go. Just going to do one fight. So we get, basically, it all amounts to we get a free fate weave and that's it that that that's what we're looking for and that, that's how we can guarantee since we have only one non-resource card in our deck guarantee that we draw it and as soon as we can guarantee that we draw, draw we can draw the card one card always uh you know with consistency if the card is powerful enough that means that we're going to be able to win the game with it so we keep we get our Exocoi on the first row of the game. When we draw it, it's going to create a troop and then uh, we're going to have it in our hand. All right. One of the uh, other weakness compared to the other strategies of this build is that you're always drawing Exocoi as your first card and it creates a troop. And uh, the opponent has at least two turns to react or kill it. So if you're facing opponents with removal, it's not going to be great. If they remove that card, you're not going to be able to play your Zokoi earlier in the game. And that can be a big problem. So that's why I'm saying this one is not that great, but it, it's okay. You can even attack with it since you get it on the first turn. So uh, sometimes you need a little bit more damage and that works really well. In this case, our opponent did not remove the troop. So we're going to go turn three. And we're going to mobilize to play the Xokoi. It's going to have flight and speed. Uh, and gladiator one, so we're attacking for 10. And then we're doing this. And then we're attacking for 10. Now we were very lucky that we, we, get, we got a Crash Rich Tusker. That's going to improve our attack by two. We're going to get a kill on third turn, but most games uh, in Adventure Zone 2, you're going to win on turn four. Most games in Adventure Zone 1, Adventure Zone 1, you're going to win on turn three. So just a small, you know, very quick and dirty way to level up new characters uh, up to the up to maybe Adventure Zone 2, where you have a bit more talent points to, to work with and your character grid from your uh, main character has, has about a bit more room, you know, a bit more space, uh, allowing you to go with better, stronger strategies. But I, I thought that this would be a neat, uh, a neat list to review here, uh, just to give you the whole picture of the long Zakar, where it's at right now after the change to the minor uh, wire gem, and and just to show you that it's still there, you're still going to gold farm with it. And you're still go going to go in the Great Machine, great machine Graveyard and Horn Gold. So, don't strip around sign enough. Hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, please uh, like and subscribe. Had a quick comment on the video. Really appreciate it. Uh, that helps to give a bit more uh, visibility to the videos that I do. Uh, if anything else, you can follow me on the forums and on Twitter with the same handle in-game as well. So, take care. See you next week.